Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Buffalo Sports Center video. I am Don, and today we <clears throat> are going to talk about the Buffalo Sabres and their past season as a whole, the 2022-23 season in an entirety, actually. We're going to do a nice little report card, so to speak, for the Sabres this past season. And yes, the reviews are going to be in. They are in actually right now. I'm looking at my hand, and yes, they are here. And they are glowing. They are positive. They have been... They are much better reviews than, say, Saw 5 or Saw 6. No, they are much better now because the Sabres finally hit 90 points for the first time since they last made the playoffs in 2011-2012. And for that, I'm going to be viewing them much more favorably than I have in, with previous Sabres teams. But let's, not, let's, let's just cut to the chase here. Let's not waste any more time now and get on with it. <clears throat> let's first talk here about the Sabres goaltending group. And the goaltending group, arguably the weakest part of the team this past season. The Sabres really had a kind of revolving door, a very unorthodox approach to their goaltending group this past season. For the most part, they had three up until the final month where Devin Levi was brought in to make it four. Originally, though, it had started out as only two goalies, Eric Comrie and Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson, this entire season, was expected to only play like a game a week. Uh, Eric Comrie was highly anticipated and he was expected to be taken over the full-time, basically number one role, but Comrie got injured not that long into the season, which prompted Uko Pekka Lukanen to be called up from Rochester, and well, I'll take this moment right now to talk about Eric Comrie because after UPL comes up from Rochester, Comrie doesn't really do much for the rest of the season. Yes, he had a 9 9 and 1 record with a ghastly 3 6 7 goals against average and 8 8 6 save percentage. He did give up 10 goals against Dallas and 0 his very next start against the New York Islanders. I just thought that Eric Comrie, not a very good player, unfortunately. Seems like a great guy. Seems like a fantastic locker room presence. Said he wants to come back, but I'm not sure there's any opportunities for him now in Buffalo, considering that he kind of blew it this past season. He had another opportunity to be a full-time NHLer, and unfortunately, it's not did not look good for him. He just was unreliable. He was oft times, oftentimes injured, too, and... When he did play, he played extremely uninspiring, and he had a couple strong games, but for the most part, he was very, very leaky, very unreliable, did not do well controlling his rebounds, and for that, I'm going to give him, Eric Comrie, a D. Now for Craig Anderson, who has retired at the conclusion of the season, if you don't know already, Craig Anderson, I thought, did his job well. He didn't make too many errors, and he looked good for a 41-year-old. He had that crazy 49 shots stopped against the Florida Panthers in February and he was pretty solid uh not too much didn't have too many crazy games outside of that Florida one maybe the home opener against the Ottawa Senators and he played very solid against the Senators again in the Sabres final home game of the season and you know, I think uh, Craig Anderson he played about once a week until the end of the season where we didn't see him really for two weeks but Craig very good season, very solid conclusion to the year, um, to his career as well. Hopefully he goes to the Hall of Fame, we shall see. But for this season, Craig Anderson gets a B. Now for Uko Pekalukkanen, one of the more polarizing players, I think, on this team. Because on the one hand, he's young, he's got great size, um, decent potential, kind of. Uh, on the other hand, he did not look good uh, in 2023, the calendar year of 2023. Outside of the month of January, really had a bad 2-6-2 and two conclusion to his season. Finished out with a 3-6-1 goals against an average and an 8-9-2 save percentage, although he did have 17 wins. And you can't simply luck your way into getting 17 wins at the NHL level. But UPL is going to have a very uphill battle to be the backup, I think, behind Devin Levi for this upcoming season. So we'll see. But for this season, I'll give UPL a C+. Plus. And then for Devin Levi, he I thought he was fantastic in his very brief seven-game cameo at the end of the year. Uh, I'm expecting a lot of good things from him this upcoming season. I think he was fantastic. He finally looked like a stable goaltender. He looked like a vet out there. He was making some incredible saves against the Panthers and the Rangers and 
the Devils as well. I thought Devin Levi, fantastic goaltender, definitely solidified excuse me, his spot as the Sabres' top guy going into next year. And for that, Devin Levi gets an A. So to summarize, we got Craig Anderson at a B, Eric Humry at a D, Devin Levi at an A, and finally, Uko Pekalukinen at a C+. Those are your goaltenders. Uh, I feel like those are pretty consensus, not too out of the ballpark. Although this next group of guys here will be, and that is the Sabres defenseman. And like the goaltending position, the Sabres didn't really have a solid group of defensemen outside of Rasmus Dahlin, Matthias Samuelson, and Owen Power. But I'll get to some of those other guys right now here, starting off with Jacob Bryson, who I think does not need to be back in Buffalo when he was playing for the Sabres this season. He did not look good. He had the worst plus-minus on the team with a minus 24, only one goal, nine, eight assists for nine points this season in 59 games. And there's a reason why we didn't really see Don Granado turn to him in those big game moments at the end of the year. Jacob Bryson is bad. He's not good. He, I think a lot of Sabres fans would agree with me in saying that he needs to go. And for that, Jacob Bryson gets a D-. minus. Moving on now to Kel Clegg, who I thought for a moment there would have been the uh, a permanent top six player for the Sabres. But no, he just didn't play consistent enough. Uh, he didn't really blow my expectations or underwhelm at all i thought he performed right to where i thought he was going to be very low event kind of solid defenseman eventually though he was overtaken by riley stillman as that rotational guy um and for that clegg gets a c now moving on to rasmus dalin i'm not going to say anything here nothing too mind-blowing he gets an a plus for this past season i thought rasmus dalin was phenomenal he had his breakout season finally well i mean if you really want to consider last season his last season his breakout sure but this season 15 goals 58 assists almost a point per game player for the sabers and really he just he looks like he's one of the best defensemen in the nhl right now i think he'll probably slot in second in norris trophy voting in this upcoming NHL awards event this offseason. But Darlene is phenomenal. He is a top five defenseman in this league. He is proving to be a phenomenal leader. A phenomenal physical presence as well on the ice. Which I'm not sure a lot of Sabres fans were expecting. Considering how he played even as recent as two seasons ago. But Darlene give me an A plus for him. And now we got another very polarizing player here for the Sabres. Henry Yoki Yarhu, Who... I, I really don't know how to feel about Yoki Yarhu. Sometimes he gives us flashes like, hey, maybe he could grow into that top four defenseman. But there are other times, especially in those big games, <clears throat> that Devils game that eliminated the Sabres this past season, where Yoki Yarhu just doesn't look like he's up to it at, in a top four role. He looks much more like a, a bottom pairing kind of defenseman. And unfortunately, that's not what the Sabres brought him in here to do. And for that reason, I think he's been disappointing in terms of nhl abilities i think yoki yahoo has a spot in buffalo still as i said it would be on that bottom pairing ideally with Ilya labushkin but for yoki yahoo considering his expectations when he came to buffalo even this past off season he just he hasn't really improved and for that he's gonna get a c um let's talk about Ilya labushkin here who i thought did his job relative to expectations um, especially after he finally got comfortable when he returned from his long-term injury in the middle of the year. Post that, he, had, he was very good. Most Sabres fans will remember him, though, for scoring that crazy overtime winner against Tampa back in late February, and that's one of the best moments of the Sabres season. And for that alone, I'm going to give Ilya Labushkin a C+, because he didn't disappoint like Yoki Yarhu did. He performed relative to expectations, and he even got two goals this season, so... For a bottom pairing guy who brought a lot of energy to the lineup, I'll take that. Now let's talk about Owen Power, and I feel like I'm going to get some hate for this, but I'm going to give Owen Power a B+. Plus. I feel like he could shoot the puck a whole lot more, but I understand that he's 19, and that confidence in going to the net, scoring like Darlene does, that comes with age. So I'm very excited. If this is what Owen Power looks like as a rookie, I don't want to see what he looks like as a five-year, six-year vet because he is going to be scary for other teams. 
exciting for us Sabres fans, but scary for other teams. But for now, um, he got 35 points this season, which is very good. You know, actually, I'm going to change this from a B plus to an A minus. Owen Power was very solid. He's got so much calmness, so much. He's like a, a, I don't know. He looks like he's already 25 on the ice sometimes. It's it's really crazy considering that he's only 19. Now let's move on to my favorite player, one of my favorite players on the team, Matias Samuelson. Really underrated guy. He's not going to show very often on the score sheet, although he did this past in the final week of Sabres games recently. But Matias Samuelson, what a rock star this guy is. What a solid defensive defenseman in the top four he is for the Sabres. When they put Samuelson with Darlene, it automatic, automatically makes Darlene that much more comfortable to go up into the play. Samuelson just kind of hangs back. He doesn't really get all too aggressive that often. And it's no secret that when he's on, when he's playing for the Sabres, the Sabres oftentimes win. And for that, he also gets an A-. minus. And finally, we got Riley Stillman, who I thought did a solid job post-trade trade deadline. I thought he was really good for Buffalo. I liked... The physical presence that he added, I liked how he really stabilized the bottom pairing, and he's definitely a quality depth defenseman for Buffalo. I'd love to see him come back next season. It won't result in a crazy high grade for him. I'm going to give him a B-, minus. but I really liked how Riley Stillman play. I know a couple of fans don't, but that's their prerogative, and this is mine. Reminder that this is only my opinion. But uh, there's your defensemen. Jacob Bryson at a D minus, Cal Clegg C, Rasmus Dahlin at an A plus, Yoki Yarhu at a C, Ilya Labushkin at a C plus, Owen Power at an A minus, Matias Samuelson also at an A minus, and finally Riley Stillman at a B minus. Let's move on now to our third and final group of players, that is. And that's the forwards group. And, of course, this, there's going to be a lot more guys to talk about here. Um, I'm going to jump right into it because I don't want to take too much more of your time. And let's begin off with Dylan Cousins, who finally had that breakout season. Uh, he finally cracked the – just just started scoring again. He, it's It seemed like a real big struggle for Cousins in the past to score, only scoring 13 goals in Don Granado's first full season in 2021-2022. But now, in the 22-23 season, Cousins broke all barriers. He scored 31 goals for 68 points, and really looks like a phenomenal second-line center for the Sabres for the future. And for that, Dylan Cousins gets an A. I'm going to give him an A, not an A-, just an A. Um, Zemgis Gergensens, this is a guy that a lot of people are debating right now whether the Sabres should bring him back or not. I personally think they should, because you know what you're getting from Gergensens. Around 10 goals per season, around 18 to 20 points as well. Very solid on the fourth line, great four checker, one of the best defensive forwards as well in the league. And for that, he gets a B- in my book. You know what you're getting from him. You know that he's a solid fourth liner. He won't cost very big bucks for the Sabres this offseason. Bring him back because he's going to really help stabilize that Sabres bottom six forward group. And I really feel like they should reward this guy by helping him reach his first ever playoff game. Let's continue on now to Jordan Greenway, who huh, he had his moments post-trade deadline. But I, I, I don't think he showed enough to me where I, I, I go, is does he have a long-term future in Buffalo? I don't think so. And for that, he is going to get a C-plus for me. Oops, C-plus. He scored four goals in 17 games, and it's not good enough. He did not look good enough, especially the first couple of games. I mean, post his mini-injury, about three games or so into his Sabres tenure, he looked much better, looked more comfortable. I like to see what he can do with a full offseason, full training camp, because sometimes I know, for especially for those um, guys who've never been moved before, getting moved from a, to a different franchise, that can be a lot. We only see a little bit. We see a little bit of, a, of the surface level for these guys on the ice, but I'm sure off the ice, Greenway was having a whole tsunami of feelings, emotions, trying to wrap his head around going to and living in a new city here in Buffalo. So I'll give him a pass. We'll see what he does this next season as a bottom six winger. On to Vinny Henestrosa now, who I don't see the Sabres bringing back whatsoever. Um, that's very clear. He only played 26 games this season, only scoring two times in those 26 appearances. 
Uh, he's just not strong enough defensively. Great flow, great piece of uh, hair. Um, I like his shot sometimes. His vision is really good, but I just don't feel like Don Granado wants a defensive liability in the bottom six. So for that, Vinny Henestrosa, he's going to get a C. Moving on now to Tyson Jost, who the Sabres took as a flyer in December as a waiver wire claim from the Minnesota Wild. And I really liked what Tyson Jost brought to this group. He was a stabilizing presence on that third line with centering Casey Middlestad and Victor Olofsson. And that was, remember, that was a time when Middlestad and Olofsson were really struggling. But Tyson Jost helped stabilize them. He improved both of their plays for a good while before Middlestad eventually went off to the first line. But Tyson Jost, I, I am worried that the Sabres brass aren't going to bring him back for this next season. I really hope they do because I liked Jost. I liked his defensive game. And for that, Tyson Jost gets a B plus. Continuing on now to the energetic Peyton Krebs, who I also thought had a solid season for Buffalo. Um, fourth liner, would like to see more growth from him, a little more scoring touch. I feel like he's going to break out next season. We shall see. But for now, he's going to get a very solid B minus. Um, just because he didn't even hit 10 goals this season. Now for Casey Middlestad, who I thought was the most surprising player for the Sabres this season. Middlestad was phenomenal in the second half, and he actually finished with 59 points in 82 games. Career high, 15 goals. Career high, 44 assists. Career high, as I mentioned already, 59 points with a only a plus minus of negative 8. And reminder, he started the season at like negative 20 or something. He was terrible, but... Casey Middlestad, I'm just going to go right out and say it. He gets an A. He gets an A. Casey Middlestad made his case. He finally showed a bit more jump in his step, really improved his physical game, his defensive game, and I would love to see him center Tuck and Skinner on that first line going into next season. And finally, Kyle Poso. Well, not finally. On this side of my screen here, Kyle Poso. He scored only 11 goals this season on the Sabres' fourth line, and it appears increasingly likely, maybe, we'll see, actually, don't don't quote me on that, that the Sabres will bring back their captain for the next season. He's another guy that I'd love to see the Sabres reward with a playoff run. He was, I thought he was really solid. He did his job, although at times it was clear that his speed is not there anymore. But as a locker room presence, as a captain, he scored some big goals as well in the final month of March as the Sabres were making their playoff run, uh, run towards the playoffs. Unfortunately, they fell short, but Akposo, I thought, did his job. He did it well, and for that, he gets a B. And now Victor Olsen and this is one of more the more strange players in the NHL because on the one hand, Victor Olsson scores 28 goals, I believe. Yeah, 28 goals this season. And, you know, that's really good, right? 28 goals. Like, that's good. Any team would kill for that. A Sabres fan would kill for that. But then you take a look at his plus minus. It's a negative 23. And while that stat is not always totally reliable, for this season it was. He was just not good defensively. He was lacking. He was very unfocused in the defensive zone. He was just a liability in the second half of the season. And for that, a lot of Sabres fans want him traded. And I would say that I'm in that boat too. I want Victor Olsson gone. I don't. I feel like he's outlived his welcome. And there will be a team out there that will be stupid enough to just say, hey, look, he scored 28 goals. There's potential. Let's get him. I feel like there will be a team. So for that, I'll give... Uh, Victor Olofsson, a C+. Plus. J.J. Paterka, solid rookie season. Not too crazy. Only 12 goals for 32 points. Like Dylan Cousins last season, I feel like he was really snake-bitten in front of the net. That'll change with more time as he gets more comfortable at the NHL level. And, you know, I, I really should be... I will give Paterka and Jack Quinn the same grade because they really are the same player. They played together for the entire season. They were scratched together. They scored usually around the same time together. So for that, I'll give both of them B minuses. And by the way, both of them still have a lot to be desired in their defensive game. So I'd love to see them keep improving on that. And now on uh, the other side here, yeah, I got to move my head this way. Um, we got Jeff Skinner, Tage Thompson, and Alex Tuck. This is easy. Give me an A plus on all three of them. Alex Tuck is going to be the next captain for the Sabres. Whenever Cogposo um, retires, 
Alex Tuck will be the next captain. Jeff Skinner, he returned to a point per game player. He's he's making that nine million dollar contract worth it. <laughs> Who could have believed saying that? In 2020, what, 2023, Jeff Skinner is a point-per-game player for the Buffalo Sabres. And making he's making that $9 million contract look like it was worth it. And kind of a bargain, considering uh, the rates some other players are going for in the NHL at the moment. And then Tage Thompson. Where do I begin with Tage frigging Thompson? 94 points. He is the first Sabres player since Danny Briere in 06 07 to get hit 90 points in a season. 47 goals, 47 assists, plus four, plus minus. He was the heart and soul. Well, no, Alex Tuck was the heart and soul of this team. But Tage Thompson is definitely the offensive focus for this team. It's him. If he's performing, the Sabres are performing. Tage is a phenomenal player. He is, I think he's a top 10 player in the NHL now, given this past season's work from him. Although he finished the season kind of rough with all those injuries, Tage had a crazy season, and I can't believe it's 2023 and we're seeing Tage Thompson hit 93 points for the Sabres. That's that's incredible. Um, so you've seen now all the forwards. Let me summarize them very quickly. Dylan Cousins at an A, Gergensen's at a B-. minus. Um, Greenway at a C plus, Vinny Henestrosa at a C, Tyson Jost at a B plus, Peyton Krebs at a B minus, Casey Middlestead at an A, Kyle Poso at a B, Olofsson C plus, Paterka B minus, Quinn B minus, Skinner A plus, Thompson A plus, and Alex Tuck A plus. Um, and finally, let's talk a little bit about the Sabres coaching staff, and I don't have a little graphic next to my head, but I would give the Sabres coaching uh, a B plus. And there were some moments where some personal decision, decisions, excuse me, from Don Granado really baffled me, like when he was holding out to keep let Olofsson keep on playing and scratching the likes of Tyson Jost and J.G. Paterka instead. Uh, that was kind of confusing. The penalty kill needs to be seriously revamped. Goaltending coach, I, I don't know who that is right now, but he needs to be seriously looked at, and they need to reconsider whether or not this guy has a job or not because as a whole the Sabres goalies did not perform very well and just uh, they need to do a couple of tweaks some of their strategies especially in the defensive zone their structure is not very good their discipline as well in the D zone is not great as well so the Sabres are gonna have to do some significant improvement upon that this offseason but as a whole Don Granado, Matt Aulis, Marty Wilford they all wheeled the Sabres to 91 points, which is far beyond what I thought anyone would have expected for this team going into the season, this time in October. So they get a, a B-plus in my book. Let's see them keep on growing. I feel like the coaching staff, along with the team, will grow, and they will get the Sabres to the playoffs next season. But folks, there it is. What did you think about my Sabres report card? I know this was a long Geez, 20-something minute video. Um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Did I get anything wrong? Did I get anything right? Tell me. But anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I was Don. This is Buffalo Sports Center. Check out the video right next to me on the screen here. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will see all of you in the next video. Peace out.